Uh, because I believe 63 is BZZ, so. Hmm. Interesting. So Skyrath Mage, Lena as supports, Jakiro as a two position. Like, I don't think you should be running a full tri lane with these three heroes. So a two position Jakiro of one position faces Void and a Marana in the off lane, I guess. It's odd. It's odd to say the least. It will give them some significant pushing power early on. Uh, the Jakiro works so well with the Faces Void Ultimate that it can make sense um, giving him a core position. Meanwhile, on Yolo Fly, they, they had that interesting last pick of the Silencer, which is going to give them a lot of strong team fight. And if they can get the Tidehunter to a decent Blink Dagger timing, um, they will be able to have strong, strong. It's all about who gets the jump first, right? If the Chronosphere is laid down first, catching two or three heroes, the Macro Pyre is on one or two heroes. Those heroes are probably going to burn out inside the Chronosphere, if not shortly after. It will have no impact in the team fight. And then from there, it's a simple three versus five. Very easy fight for them to take. At the same time, YOLO Fly. <laughs> YOLO Fly. Yellow Fly may be able to initiate with a Tight Hunter first, follow up with a Silencer Ultimate, and the uh, the Faces Void will probably be bursted down during that silence period. A very early smoke, though. This is curious from Yolo Fly. They do not have a level one Roche strat at all. I'm not sure if this was a mistake by them smoking because if if they wanted to be able to utilize the smoke to go catch somebody out, they would have all ran down to about right here. And they would have smoked up here. Because then you have smoke and smoke time for going into the jungle and traveling around the world. You'll be smoked up that whole entire time. When you smoke inside the base, you are pretty much done with your smoke by the time you get into the enemy jungle. So it makes zero sense for me uh, why they did that. I'm going to presume it was an accident. Uh, they didn't actually intend to go for level 1 Roshan. Apparently, Virtus Pro felt like it was a level 1 Roshan attempt. Personally, I, I, I don't really see it. I mean, any, any combination can technically have a level 1 Roshan if you have enough, like, uh, uh, have enough uh, health potions and, and that sort of thing. You can, but I, I don't really see the big strength of this team. They, they have the Disabled, they have a potential minus armor to be laid down with a Lycan Howl to come into play, you know, there's some small things, but there's no very obvious, there's no easy the hero to be able to tank up Roshan with minions, there's no extra amount of physical damage that's out of the ordinary, just howls, so. That's interesting, Ward is gonna be spotted out, or at least it should be anyway. Um, Rana places herself a Ward that's not only reveals vision of the, um, of the room, but also is gonna be able to get some good amount of vision of the mid lane where the Silencer is going to be going up against God's Lena. I wasn't sure with the whole stand-in nonsense whether or not they were actually going to be having God playing a core position here, but they will. Core position Lena going up against the Silencer, and they also know that we have an invisible Marana just lying in wait, and that is why Squeal Your Hearts Out Boys is going to be sitting back waiting for that invis to fade because he doesn't want to be taking an arrow to the face. And that means we're going to be having a one position Jakiro left with a Skywrath Mage to support him. And that means a off lane faces you. void. So the lane's not what we counted at all. I expected Murata to be a core. I expected Jakiro to be the mid laner and not the one position. Lina is a sport. And I, I knew faces void. Faces void off lane is always a possibility. Didn't really expect it here. I thought they would have prioritized the the uh, void a bit more and gone for either an off lane Murata or some sort of aggro tribe. But interesting laning phase so far from both teams. Uh, Silencer mid, not a big surprise considering the laning phase, but we don't get to see Silencer as a core too often anyway. So this should be a pretty interesting matchup. I'll, I'll, I'll like it quite a bit. Tide Hunter though, oh man. This Faces Void is having a damn good time here at the top lane Dyer's because the two attack. supports can harass him, but the Lycan adds very little uh, in the laning phase. So the Void is able to sit pretty far forward and get a lot of CS without much worries. You compare this to the Tidehunter, 
who is going up against the ultimate harassment, which is the Skywrath Mage and his constant throwing out of his uh, his Arcane Bolt, which is just super obnoxious. But you add in an Ice Path plus Liquid Fire, the free ability that gives you all the uh, all the harassment in the world. This is super tough for Titan. We already saw how low he got just from that one combination. Silencer is having to play constantly scared because the arrow at any point in time could come in. Fortunately, uh, Silencer was able to dodge that one. Jonim is just doing this free roaming Marana. Whoa! That was interesting. Sorry, guys. I'm not sure what caused that mass amount of static. <laughs> I didn't move at all. Very odd. Another arrow whiffs from Jotam. This is always dangerous. Uh, uh, like, a roaming Marana is... Like, you have to actually land the arrows. If you don't land the arrows, you end up just completely gimping yourself for, for no benefit whatsoever. Like, he had a, a lot of pressure put on the silencer there, but I don't think the silencer is so harmed by it. Oh, silencer. Poor time to throw out that curse of the silent. Top lane looks like an arrow did land on uh, half this time around. Tito unable to finish him off. A nice heal will save the Dazzle. And Virtus Pro will be forced back. Finally, Jotam was able to land one. Unfortunately, did not land an arrow, which would, would have been the first blood. God is just crushing the silencer right now. Between the space offered to him by the arrow, mixed in with maybe a couple of bad curse of the silence, He's having a great time in middle. Like the, the, the one before this last one where he dragon slayed as the curse hit him. <laughs> so that curse literally did nothing. Whoa, I they're like it massively overextending himself there. I mean, you can't afford to be dying to an offlane faces void. The offlane faces void has a lot of survivability, true, but he shouldn't be killing anybody. At least not in the first five levels. So Lycan needs to be uh, a lot more careful with his position. Faces Void is free farming for an offlaner, though. I mean, he's 20 and 2 by 4 minutes in. That is that is the same amount of CS as Archikiro. Who has a bit more denies, but the same amount of last hits so far. Once they, they haven't done it yet, but eventually the Jakiro with this maxed out uh, Liquid Fire would say as soon as they hit level 7, they'll start aggressively pushing down this tower. Right now, they don't want to feed too much experience to the Tidehunter. It's why they're putting so much effort into keeping the lane back with Denies while also harassing the Tidehunter away. But eventually, they will start uh, pushing in, taking the tower very early on. Tidehunter will get some much needed experience out of it, but... It'll still be a super fast tower and a big advantage for Virtus Pro, who are probably going to be going for a mech on this Chikiro, at least that's what I would have. Their tight hunter gonna be gone on here at the bottom lane. Ice Path holds him in for quite a long time, and that macro pyre, liquid fire I mean, will not quite take him out. The tango plus the wand is enough to save him. Now BZZ's gonna be in some trouble as Shadow Shaman starts hexing him up. And if the sounds are coming in from the side, they will be able to get the kill onto Yol easily. The question is whether or not BZZ can manage to get anything extra out of this. Shadow Shaman lives with just barely any help to his name and BZZ. Getting out, turns on the tight hunter. He will be able to get this one kill. But can he actually get out? He does have a lot of regen. Throws out the ice path. And will actually help push him up, but the Silencer has already found him inside of the jungle. They're going to be able to claim this kill, hopefully, with the last word. Turns around, gets the kill on the Shadow Shaman. Nicely done by ZZZ. He's actually getting away from this one. The Curse of the Silent will eventually burn him out, but he's trying to get a Liquid Fire. Can he get it? No! Silencer gets, finally, that much-needed intelligence. Meanwhile, in the top lane, we have the Lycan going down to Cedoy, who didn't even have to pop his Chronosphere for it. So, Yolo Fly suffering on all accounts here. Cedoy threatening it. He's gonna go for the Lycan now. Look at this, this is a level four Lycan. Arrow over the top, Dazzle, who does not have Shallow Grave anymore. He just used it during the last death of Lycan and it's still on cooldown. This is just an embarrassing turn of events for Yolo Fly there as losing to an offlane faces void like that and having the first death be without chrono is just not what you want to be seeing but john no doubt had a hand in that first kill probably being able to land the arrow just like he did against hat right here 
And picks up another kill for himself. So finally, Chanup getting some big returns Dyer's for his Rumi Murata. Middle lane. Dyer's God. Coming in from the last right click. Will be able to get it. Dyer's Just barely killed it. That shot is trying to salve up at the last second. The same time as BZZ taking that bottom lane with his uh, Liquid Fire. We're now going to be seeing a tri lane here in the top lane to protect the Vasus Void while everyone else does some soloing. I really like this build from God, by the way. Um, I think this is by far the best core Lina build. As a support, it's a little bit more questionable, but I think as a core, this is the build you should be going for. We'll talk about it in a second, but Silencer has already been silenced up. See, oh, the arrow landing as well. Quick and easy. Zedoy just being fed to all high heavens right now. Seven and two, eight minutes in. They're losing towers constantly. As you can see, Jakiro has gone in for the dive on Tidehunter, picks up that kill, and is soon going to be taking a tier two if no help arrives. Mask of Madness already being picked up by the Faces Void means he's a serious threat with his Chronosphere now. Going back to the build on God, I, I think you should be maxing out Dragon Slave and leaving Light Strike Array at level one and going for a second level in Fiery Soul. It's an attack speed bonus of 40 every single time you cast a spell. And when you're in this lane, we're going for these kills, you're getting off two spells. So it's an extra 80 attack speed. Stand in hat. Oh, dear. Oh, Another Chronosphere will ensure a double kill for the Radiant side. One going to Cedite, the other going to Lena. That's going to be also a tier one tower call. Looks like the Chikira was forced back from the uh, bottom lane. But he didn't actually go down. Denied tower should go out. Oh, jeez, look at that silence as health. Was honorably done. But anyway, what, what, I'm, what I'm trying to say is the Light Strike Array, the upgrade, only gives you 60 extra damage and a 0.1 stun duration, which is not existent, right? The, the stun duration of 0.1 is not even worth talking about. So in that case, you just really see the extra 60 damage. But with the attack speed you're getting from Fiery Soul, Dyer's you should be getting enough attack. auto attacks that you will actually get more, extra, you'll, you'll get more damage attack. out of the Fiery Soul level than you will out of the extra stun. <laughs> Poor Lycan just getting blown up by the Laguna Blade. Nothing he can do there. Radiant's bottom Top lane, Cedoy casually attack. farming past Dyer's the tier 2 tower. Is under attack. Yola Fly. They don't even have... I mean, this tight hunter, you can't blame him. The dual lane was one of the toughest dual lanes you're going to see for a long time, but... He is nowhere close to level 6, and without that Ravage, I don't see how they're ever going to be able to stop this onslaught. Mirage is going to go down. Not so fast. Shallow Grave, well timed by Hat, but Cedo is just going to shadow him all the way until the Shallow Grave runs out and catches him on the end. Again. Our poor Tidehunter, Arrow, comes in. Fortunately, both of them will be able to dodge it, but this should mean with the Jakiro now here, a tier two going down. Sure enough, an early, early mech being picked up by Jakiro. I have to say, I like this lineup quite a bit from Virtus Pro. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing more of them in the future. The last Virtus Pro uh, roster was quite a disappointment for for many people. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Uh, me included. Oh, really? Yule Scepter already picked up by God. It's going to ensure a kickoff onto the Lycan and several more. Zito catches out two inside the Chronosphere. Full supports will fall. And Mirage on the way out. It's going to get caught out by Lina Stun. He's going to fall as well. This is just a slaughter fest at this point. I'm grateful to Like they're diving into tier threes. And it's ten and a half minutes in. Good God, they are so far. 14,000 gold lead by 11 fallen. minutes in. I don't think anybody's lost with that much of a gold lead before. And they can even start sieging down a lot of these uh, tier 3 towers now with the uh, liquid fire coming out of Tide Hunter. Trying to pick himself up level 6, but gets denied as Virtus Bro come in. And a follow up Tide Hunter will easily fall. Top lane, BZZ has just been caught out, but with the mech, it's going to give him so much extra survivability. And Cedoy, he has a Mask of Madness. Silencer can't afford to be playing around with this one. He's going to need a Shallow Grave at the right time, Cedoy. A little early on the Shallow Grave, but better safe than sorry. So, uh, school your arms out, man. He's still going to go down. That look could fire and turn the kill. And nice drop off there. Oh my god, even the Lycan going down to the bottom lane where God was able to pick him off. 
You can't even call all of these kills. They're just happening too fast. Virtus Pro, 21 kills at 12 minutes in. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen that many kills on one team before. This, this quickly. Structures are 45. That's just impressive. And we're going to have uh, now a tier 3 Fallen. Because why not? They've got the mech, so they have all the sustainability in the world. The liquid fire increases their... Uh, Increases our survivability versus the tower quite dramatically due to the attack speed slow. And they've got all this consistent damage. Silencer's now going to be picked off, silenced up. How ironic. Gets right click down. Tidehunter also going to be caught in the ice blast. And beautiful. Beautiful from Chrono through there. You see the There's your first combination of macro fire. Not that it matters. Everyone's dead. Yolo Fly are just going full Yolo. Running at the enemy team. Crush to fall, Tidehunter going down once again. The only saving grace for YOLO Fly in this game is completely over is that they are all so massively low level. Alright, Silencer's literally just feeding that. Can you please call the GG? They're literally all so low level that they just have no death timers whatsoever. Found farming, 13 minutes in. Legit strategy. We should try it sometime. Guys, top are under attack. All right, a little bit of all talk. Please, just call the GG. Good lord. So this is a waste of everyone's time. Just, just freaking GG out. Dyer's top barracks have fallen. Ridiculous. Right, they're going to go down the top lane, 13 and a half minutes in. Yeah. Yep. I want to I feel like calling this action is a disgrace to calling Dota action anywhere. Don't kill the messenger. Because <laughs> literally, at, literally, at least one of your players was intentionally beating. So yeah, Dota's Pro looking strong. 31 to 2, 14 minutes in. Final kill score, hopefully, as they start going for the tier 4s. That's a uh, Necrobook 3 on the face of 4, by the way. Dyer's this is actually a legit strategy. I want to see this a little bit more from Faces Voids going Necroborn. It is legit. This is this is not just a troll item, in my opinion. Oh, silence. Attempts to teleport, gets bashed. Standard. And Chronosphere on the fountain. What better way to fountain farm? Hey, they got one! They might get two! Zap them! Oh no, Mirage, he couldn't even finish off the Skyrim mage there. Agent is under attack. Hey, at least it could increase the number of kills they had by 50% with that fountain dive. Let's, let's just... Yeah, now you can get the full majesty of this fountain dive. Dyer's agent is under attack. All right. So, somebody's got to have sort of like, somebody's got to have some sort of kill counting Dyer's item or some sort of ridiculous because they're trying to. Oh, that doesn't even work for private games. Dyer's agent is under attack. I guess they're going for some sort of record. Over a 30,000 gold lead by 15 minutes. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Well, what a game to end on. <laughs> what a disgusting game to end on. Well done. Well done by Virtus Pro, though. I mean, that was uh, it was a fun strategy. I just wish we could have seen a um, a bit more.